This is the easiest computer build I've ever done. I'm, I'm totally jinxing it now. Everything's gonna go wrong. Oh, come on, really? Ugh. It's time to build a mom PC. So, it's almost Mother's Day, and my mom needs a new PC. My mom's a college professor, has been for a very long time, and while in-person classes are obviously returning a little bit more, she's historically always done a ton of online classes and lectures and things like that, and needs a computer at home to grade papers, respond to emails, have Zoom teams, whatever, meetings, host online classes, the like. We're not gaming, we're not doing video editing, but you know, video work for conference calls is still a thing. And she needs a new PC. She's historically always only used the tiny little Dell Optiplex or the Lenovo machines that are basically like a little laptop, super tiny. And she was looking to get a new one that might last a little bit longer and it was gonna cost her $700 because the market is just a mess at the moment. Figured we could build something better. I won't be able to make it as small. That challenge is virtually impossible. Uh, but to do it cheaply using parts I already have and some well-selected parts to make it quiet and good to go, I think we can do it. All right, so the platform that we're building this entire build off of is Intel 10th Gen. So I had a Intel Core i5-10600K laying around. I was actually about to, you know, give this away. I was like, hey, I could use this for that purpose. We are going this with this because it's new enough to be super fast and last a very long time in terms of not needing to buy a new computer anytime soon. This will hold up for a very long time. 10th gen is rock solid, even if it's, you know, 12th gen's out and something new might be coming soon. 10th gen is still rock solid. It's an i5. It's got an iGPU, so we don't need to dedicate a graphics card right now, which is huge in terms of sound, power requirements, extra points of failure. So super stoked for that. We're going with the B560MA Pro from MSI as our motherboard as we pull this out here. And the goal is really just to make, wow, this comes with barely anything compared to like higher end motherboards. Got M.2 screws, ugh. A generic I.O. backplate. I've not seen one of those in a while because I want it as small as possible. Because again, the builds that she's used to using are super tiny. Uh, and while I could not match that, you just, even mini ITX is bigger than some of the builds she has. This is small enough to do what we want. I believe these are dual 16 gig sticks of the Ballistics Sport by Crucial and Micron. They've been huge supporters of the channel in the past in terms of getting us RAM to use, so that will be good. Our iGPU provides HDMI, and this has a VGA output. Hopefully that meets her monitoring needs. If not, we'll be putting a GPU in this. Small build, small motherboard, 32 gigs of RAM would be insane. 16 is fine. We're just gonna start with the basics. We're actually gonna put the SSD in first. We got a two terabyte NV1 from Kingston. Two terabytes is the safe spot of where it's more than she needs, but also more than she'll really grow into, especially since she offloads a lot and everything's in the cloud these days. So that's good. We got our one M.2 slot on the front of the motherboard here, and that is it. That's all you get with these little B560 boards. So we got one M.2 slot, we've got two sticks of RAM, we've got one PCIe 16X slot, and then two 1X slots, one of which, of course, will be blocked by the 16X card if you put it in. A little chipset heatsink, no VRM cooling, uh, but we're going with an air cooler. We'll talk about that in a sec, so it should be fine. We've got nine USB ports. Hopefully that's enough. PS2 for keyboard and mouse if you need it. Gigabit LAN audio. This is basic, but I was trying to go super cheap for this part because we are mostly supposed to be working from, you know, parts we already had and a limited budget, and I didn't want to get super overkill with this. So, of course, install the processor. Line up your notches, which it should just be straight up and down on most of these motherboards. Give it a tiniest bit of wiggle and latch down. Save this in the motherboard box in case you need to RMA your board, since the pins are on the board with Intel. We've got two fan headers up top, and that is it for fan headers. Uh, we might have to get fancy with splitters. We've got USB 3 front panel, obviously your power, four, six SATA ports, Front panel, audio, and USB. Color-wise, we're going with the Kotetsu Mark II from Scythe. I have heard lots of good things from Scythe, especially in terms of how they compete with Noctua and the like. And then we're going with a good old Thermaltake 500 watt power supply. This is all smart RGB. I'm not worried about that. I just wanted a super basic power supply that was enough in case we wanted to add a basic graphics card, but wasn't gonna get too crazy. 
and had a quiet mode. Because again, I didn't want to send my mom something that's going to ramp up and get super loud when that's not really what she was signing up for when we're not doing gaming here. Of course, this board has one of those heat shields for the M.2, which is fine. Peel off the thermal pad, or the, the cover for the thermal pad, drop the drive in. And this one's going to be held in by the screw for the heat spreader, which is pretty cool. This RAM runs at 3200 megahertz, by the way. Uh, the other kit that I have is 3600 megahertz. Again, for non-high performance compute scenarios, you know, gaming, video work, that kind of thing, I really don't consider that a necessity on Intel. And the kit that I had was a Kingston kit with like RGB and stuff, and I didn't really want to use that here. <laughs> 3600 megahertz RGB RAM to just do zoom calls would be kind of ridiculous. All right. I guess we go ahead and plop the cooler on. I think that's the play at this point. This is the no frills mom PC, as I'm calling it. We will want pushing air through to the back of the case. We got a 120 mil fan. These should be fairly quiet as well. Well, these spacers are even keyed, so they only go on one way. Scythe. You fancy dog. Oh, is this a case badge? No. It's just a rubber pad. I don't honestly know what that one's for. Just realized I'm not even reading the English instructions. Oh, none of these are English. That's cool. Ah, oh, okay. Scythe, I was giving you good credit until now. What is this packet of thermal? No. I guess it's less waste. We're just going to put some MX4 on it. It deserves better than that. Alright. Alright, once again, this is super straightforward. You've got a backplate, spacers, screw, or the nuts that secure the brackets that you screw the cooler into here around the socket. And that is done. You literally just thermal paste, plop this down, screw it in. I still don't know what that rubber pad is for. I do not see reference to it. It's gonna bother me. Maybe it's for like the fan? Rubber space it for socket 775. I see. All right. We don't got to worry about that. All right. So all the instructions I previously gave still apply. Let me just... That was a satisfying peel. And of course, again, you want the fan blowing towards the back of the case. That's actually going to fit this time. We'll load up our thermal paste. Again, my preferred easy compound, Arctic MX4. This is getting a little old, but you can buy these giant tubes of it. And if you are doing lots of builds, you do not want to be caught without having enough thermal paste. If you want to see more content with the workbench setup, doing maker projects, 3D printing, crafting, and things like that, I've got a whole slew of content available and coming soon over on Nebula, my own streaming service I built with my creator friends. My videos are higher quality there, ad-free, and I have a lot more of them that you don't necessarily see on this channel because I don't know that they do very well with the algorithm given the focus of this channel, and I don't want to make a whole separate channel for it. So you can just watch it over there because there's some good projects I've been working on, and we're, we've got scheduled content going out through most of this year so you don't want to miss it the best way to sign up for nebula is actually with curiosity stream curiosity stream has a library of thousands of entertaining and documentary titles and they wanted to form a power alliance with nebula to create an awesome bundle to where when you sign up for curiosity stream at the link in the description down below you get access to curiosity stream and you get access to nebula both sites for the price of one so you get all of nebula's awesome creators and the thousands of titles 
up on Curiosity Stream, including Skylab, a documentary about NASA's first space station before the International Space Station. Lots of cool, interesting stuff to learn about there. They have tons more titles just like it for those of you who like to learn. And they are currently running a Mother's Day sale where you can get access to both sites for under $12 per year. That is 42% off their annual subscription. Less than $12 for so much content and a year worth of exclusive videos from me on top of extended and ad-free cuts of the YouTube videos you like here. That's curiositystream.com slash epos. Sign up today. Get your popcorn ready. All right. Next up, of course, you have to install the fan. Again, this is a 120 mil. Gonna be enough. Like, the 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 10600K could push a decent amount of, by the way, towards the labels, the airflow direction. The 10600K could pull a decent amount of power and, you know, build up some heat if you were putting it to work, but I don't, you don't need extravagant cooling for an i5 in a basic build. Again, this is the no frills build. We're going as cheap as possible while still maintaining. So cheap as possible comes with some caveats because some people will do cheap as possible and it's just like, you know, you gotta be swapping out parts or maintaining it regularly. I want my mom to be able to put this computer under her desk. The case will have dust filters and other than those dust filters, cause they do have dogs and it doesn't have to go under a desk. But you know, other than the dust filters, Never have to think about it again for like 10 years or something. So this isn't the cheapest cooler I could have gotten, but it's the cheapest while maintaining, you know, an extra tier of performance and reliability to make sure that for the long haul, we're good to go here. And the Ram's obviously a little bit overkill, but it's what I had around. And for me, part of the saving money was for, was to obviously use what I had. All right. I mean, that's the main computer build. We're gonna get it thrown in a case here, which is way too big. Like, you do not need much room for this in the power supply, but I wanted something quiet and all the like super mini ITX stuff got really expensive real quick to the point where it was kind of diminishing returns about whether we wanted it to be small and or cheap. Sometimes those are conflicting ideals, even though they don't have to be. We're gonna get the power supply cracked open. And do a test post, and then I will show the completed build once it's in the case. If I have to go retrieve the case. This is from Thermaltake. I think it's just 80 plus. It's not even like bronze or gold or anything, which is not typically something I would purchase if I'm being honest. However, it was cheap. It was only 500 watts. We don't need anything too crazy for just the iGPU and the CPU. And for pulling that small amount of power, I feel confident that it's fine. Like I said, not what I'd normally go with, but probably okay. All right. This is not a modular power supply, even though it does have RGB, but it's got a quiet fan mode. And we're putting it in a case that isn't gonna be, you know, it's not gonna have a lot of components in it, and it's not gonna be opened up very often. So modularity would just be an abundant luxury at that point. Only two power connectors. It is a rare day that I do a build with only two power connectors. All right, I guess we boot her up. It powered on so quietly, I didn't realize it had turned on. Okay, we've got no obvious status LED or LCD, but we do have little LED indicators. This cooler is silent. What in the world? I hear the power supply, but I don't hear the CPU cooler. I realize it's not running full speed, but Scythe. Like my ear is on it. I feel like such an idiot. I've never, I have never tried out Scythe coolers. And everyone's like, oh, they can get quieter than Noctua. I 
4.1 gigahertz. We have XMP set to 2400 megahertz on the RAM. We'll have to change that. How much RAM do we have? Memory size, 32 gigs. Yes. All right, so we've got a post. We've got 32 gigs of RAM. Intel Core i5 10600K. I am impressed. This went so smoothly. All right, case wise, we're going with the Fractal Define Mini C. My camera gets very confused. We're going for quietness, dust filtration, ease of use, you know, the usual. But I think in terms of it being a responsible decision, it's probably the way to go. It's still a small case, like all things considered, this thing is pretty small and it's gonna be super quiet, especially with this cooler being so quiet. I'm feeling confident. All right, let's get this bad boy open. Ooh, still capacitive. You Still capacitive thumb screws, that means they hang on and don't just, oh, hello, come fully out uh, so you can keep track of them in the, you can see it flopping around there, even on this little case. So that is lovely to see. We've got, of course, the nice sound foam stuff here to absorb sound. Looks like we've got dust filter module probably for up here. Yeah, but we're gonna, we're gonna keep this closed since we're not doing like a AIO or anything. We do have two case fans and we only have one header for that, so we will need a splitter. That should be fine. And then it's got dust filter in the bottom for the power supply intake. I believe. Yeah, crack open the front. We've got sound dampening on the front, and then of course intake through here. I know a lot of people aren't you know stoked on that design. It's fine enough for this purpose. Then a full dust filter array on the top here. Slot in our power supply first, and this is a build with a power supply shroud. Honestly, not the biggest fan of these, but that's all right. Yeah. I am a fan of these brackets, though. Make it a lot easier to install your power supply. We're probably gonna do something funky with this front panel, but I wanna make sure I don't destroy it first. Slide this puppy in here, and we only need two of these cables, so. I'm just gonna wrap these up to the best of my ability and shove them out of the way. Honestly, because we're only doing two of these cable runs, we don't really need to cable strap them or anything. They're just gonna be fine. We do have a couple of these to run, but like, I don't think we need to do much. This is the easiest computer build I've ever done. I'm, I'm totally jinxing it now. Everything's gonna go wrong. Oh no, this case doesn't come with your standoffs pre-installed? Ooh, I have not been there in a while. All right, that should be good. We cannot forget the IO shield. I have built way too many builds and forgotten to put the IO shield in. I've also lost it, you know. They really couldn't have fit one more fan header on this board. Come on. All right, let's get it screwed down. I'm gonna have to use an Octua splitter just for the two case fans. All right, this is why I hoard everything that comes with all of my CPU colors and the like, because Noctua fan splitters always come in clutch. We don't even need to manage that. Like, officially, the easiest PC build I've ever done. Let's get the side panels on. Look at that. Completely quiet, completely enclosed. No lights. It's going to make basically no sound. I'm not really sure it gets any better than this. Oh, it's on. Once again, it's too quiet for me to notice.
Hey, the RGB lighting does have an off mode. Yeah, this is a dead silent build. The only thing in this making noise is the power supply fan. It's louder than the rest, and it's not like significant noise. Recognizes the two terabyte drive, fan set up. Honestly, most of this I'm probably gonna leave alone. We do want XMP though. The one thing I wanna do in the BIOS here is make sure that uh, TPM is enabled so that we can get I'm going to install Windows 10 because I don't think mom's really upgraded to Windows 11 for much. But I want that to be possible without tinkering. And so I want to make sure wherever it is that TPM is enabled so that when it comes time to do that, it will be okay. Yeah, we just turn it on and leave it on PTT. Huge shout out to all the people who document this on basically every other motherboard, or every motherboard. All right, I'm going to save all these settings, get it loading with Windows 10, make sure everything's stable. And meanwhile, we're gonna do something a little creative here. After getting the hardware up and running, I wanted to add a little bit of flair because this is literally just a black box. So I had the idea to stencil spray paint my mom's branding, which is just Professor Stacy on the front. So it, I, I fired up the old laser engraver in Lightburn and had to struggle a little bit because this thing, the, the, the attachment I have for it is not designed for cutting. It's just designed for engraving, but it can cut. It took me a little bit to find the right material that it could actually cut through effectively and I wound up with uh, the box for my Rode headphones. Uh, it was actually thin enough and cut it out and spray painted it. And as usual, when I stencil like this, it was not good. Well, that was a swing and a miss. Time for a backup plan. Ironically, my mom actually owns a few of the Cricut, like, vinyl cutting stuff, and I could have used that to cut me an adhesive vinyl stencil instead of doing it this way, but this did not work. So we're going to pivot instead. I'm going to cover up my, my mistakes here with a layer of spray paint, and I went to my local Michaels, picked up some stencils. Yes, I know I could 3D print my own, but time is a real bottleneck here. I will 3D print some for the future though, and we're just gonna treat the white as the background and then paint on the letters with just brush acrylic paint and call it a day. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I took three different swings at this and it was a miss in three different ways. Things kept going wrong. I have very minimal experience with paints of all the visual arts. I I've never been a hands visual arts person, always a digital visual arts person, but I'm trying to get better. This, this was a miss. I was, I was taking a risk doing some flare like this instead of leaving it plain. But realistically, my mom's gonna put it either behind her computers or under her desk, and it's never gonna be seen except for at a great distance. And what? It's the thought that counts when for, for moms, right? Uh, <laughs> so maybe, I, 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 I don't like posting complete failures and leaving it that, at that, and there's a non-zero chance, at least, that I will paint white over it again and 3D print some letters and go that way. But, in the meantime, let's just make this my commitment to get better at paint and doing paint projects so that we can do cool builds in the future because I have lots of ideas, just terrible execution skills. And maybe in a year or so, if I haven't already covered it up, we'll take it back and do something better once I've got my crap together. What do you think? Overall, pretty solid PC. Super stoked with how simple it is and how easy it was to build overall and how quiet it is, and I think it will continue to serve my mom, especially with the 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, 10600K, it, it should serve pretty well for quite a while, and if anything graphics-wise does end up becoming a bottleneck, it will be as simple as dropping in a dedicated GPU, so feeling pretty good about it. What I'm also feeling good about is this tutorial on easy multi-PC streaming without using a capture card using an OBS plugin, or this love letter to the PlayStation 2 and the PCSX2 emulator after 20 years of development. Check that out, linked below. Remember, be kind, rewind.